Yeah, let's do that. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we come and we praise and we think through so many things that you have done in our lives. We're grateful, Lord, not only that you are a saving God, not only that you are a cleansing God, that you have given us so much. And when you look at us, you see the righteousness of your Son, you see the holiness of your Son. Lord, we are grateful that we can praise you for that. But we can praise you for so many other things, that you sustain us, that you take us through the difficult times, that you continue to challenge us in faith and test us, and yet, Father, you always give us what we need. You are always there for us. And we thank you that you're here for us tonight as well. We're grateful that you give us time together. We're grateful for what you're going to do here as we come in Jesus' name and as we ask that in his name as well. Amen. Amen. It was, uh, actually, an old teacher friend uh, back in Minnesota. I guess all of my friends from my teaching days are old. Um, but she sends me things every once in a while that make me make me laugh. And I got this from her the other day. A uh, little 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 things that she just kind of found, I think, and collected. She said, "I'm in a Walmart parking lot watching a guy who can't remember where he parked. Every time he holds his remote in the air, I honk my horn." <laughs> to get me out of my parking spot faster. So now I have to sit here until we're both dead. <laughs> yeah, you can relate, can't you? Then the doctor told me I obviously need to eat healthy and exercise. She said, I choked on a carrot the other day, and all I could think was, I bet a donut wouldn't have done this to me. <laughs> If a, if a cookie falls on the floor and I bend down and pick it up, that's a squat, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but this, this was the one that made me think. She said, um, does anyone remember the good old days before Facebook and Instagram and Twitter when you had to take a photo of your dinner and then get the film developed and then go around to your friends' houses to show them the picture of your dinner? She says, no, me neither. She says, stop it. It struck me because, I don't know, I, I kind of stalk social media a lot, but I found something about myself which is interesting uh, sometimes and why I'm sometimes reluctant to, to post there. Because I get a sense, and maybe it's just because I can be cynical like others can. <laughs> um, but sometimes under the guise of staying in contact with friends and sharing life together, um, there are some posts that feel sometimes more like, look where I am, or look what I cooked, or look what I did with my kids, or look at this beautiful home I just bought in someplace, you know, T Tunerville, Tennessee, or whatever. Um, and certainly living in the culture that we live in, uh, where you have a lot of political boasting, this, I'm not even looking forward to this next year at all, this is just going to be crazy. Um, you see it in professional sports, boasting about who's going to be who, you see it in commercials all the time, uh, the ones that kill me are the the ones for prescription drugs, you know, try to, you know, buy this uh, a tour of a stupid or whatever it's called, and it's you, you, it'll cure one thing, but taking it'll, you know, the side effects will kill you. <laughs> but what I find out about myself sometimes is that I'll I'll read something or I'll hear something, and I think that's that's actually pretty good. I I should I should post that, and then I start to hear that part of me that whispers. Yeah, go ahead, because people will think you're much smarter than you are. <laughs> they think you're wise. They think you read a lot. And then I just go, forget it. I'm not going to post it. <laughs> Never get there. Never get there. I mean, my, my sense is that there's, there's a lot of boasting in the world today. And um, it can be sometimes very subtle, as 
as some of you would notice this. I feel like I notice. But I like what James says, who says, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. If you have bitter jealousy or you have selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast and be false to the truth. And I think it's just good for us to check our motives sometimes in what we're doing, especially in social media. But the truth is, everything that we have, everything that has of any kingdom value that we have learned, that we have participated in, has all been because of the Lord working through us. Anything you would want to claim, we can't ever claim as our own. We've got to believe that God is working through us. And that's why Paul wrote, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord, right? Hebrews says, Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house. That's the way I like to look at this group. We are a family together. We're growing into this temple of his. If we hold fast this confidence and are boasting in our hope, and what is our hope? Our hope is Jesus Christ. We start boasting about anything else, anything else, even how good we are as a choir. We're going the wrong direction. And I think we just need to, to, to live in that because it is Christ alone that's working in us. No longer I live, Christ who lives in me. And that's why Paul wrote, be, Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That's right in the middle there of, of uh, when I surveyed the wondrous cross, right? And then he went on to say in 2 Corinthians, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I'm always a little bit more refreshed being around people who, are not, or who aren't um, afraid to talk about their weaknesses. You know? um, and it's not that you can't be strong, but what I, I feel sometimes, it, and I think Jeremiah said it best, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love and justice and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, declares the Lord. And I, I really feel in some ways that... Um, the pull towards self-recognition in this world today has there's a lot of little little fingers in it. A lot of it is because a lot of the, the younger generation is is being told that uh, they're all champions and they don't they're all good and everything should be good on them. Um, but there's also a subtle form that I think that comes about because we fail to acknowledge the working of God in one another. And we fail to encourage other people by letting them know that. I would think that the church itself could really be revived. If every time we came together, we're looking for Christ in each other. To the point to where I could say, you know what? I remember when you used to struggle with that. You seem to be hanging in there pretty well. You know when you always were fearful about that one thing. You know when you couldn't get out of bed in the morning because you were afraid of what's going on. And here you are. Something that simple. Maybe it's just that idea of, I know you're grieving, but I'm glad you're here. That's that sense of encouragement. I don't know how often you get that in the body of Christ, but I believe it's life-changing. Because I grew up as a kid very insecure. And um, the only time I, I, I got a pat on the head was either that I got straight A's, or I was at church singing with my brother and sister, and everybody thought I was cute. So that was that was it, but nothing else. So I, I never I never thought about God working in me or through me or any of that kind of stuff, and nobody ever thought to say it. But I really do feel that if we could encourage one another in that particular way, this is how I see Christ in you. There could be a huge difference in how this group longs to be with one another. Because then you're not having to you're not having to pretend you're not having to write it about yourself, because you, we can all turn together and say, God did it. That's Christ. And I really believe that's why the psalmist writes this: My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear, and be glad. I think our souls need 
to, to, to find its boast in the Lord. Here's what I see of God in you. And the next part of that is, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Do you see how that brings everybody together? If we magnify God and what God is doing in each of us and what he does through us together, then I believe we don't have to sit around and think about how can I... How can I show somebody what a wonderful dinner I cooked on Facebook, you know? I mean, not that it's not a bad thing. If you cook well, I'm happy for it. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand how we can better be a church together and how we can better, rather than boast if we have to, because I know it can be subtle, we can really learn to exalt his name together, right? Now, Ryan's picked another song that he would like for us to learn for the 8th, and you will find it on that other piece of paper I gave to you. 